Hello, everybody. I'm Chris with Affinity HM here tonight to share with you my quest for perfect sleep. So obviously, I've been sleeping really, really well, and I want to share with you guys so many things about CPAP and other tools and tips. There are 27 altogether. I'm going to go through them really quickly, but stay with the entire video, and I'll make a promise to you. You stay with the entire video. Out of the 27, there's going to be at least one, at least one, probably more than one, but at least one that is going to absolutely make a difference for you in your sleep life. So the quest for perfect sleep, it is so much like the holy grail of health because sleep is so, so important in our health life. We have to have good sleep. And without good sleep, so many things just begin to go wrong. And with good sleep, that good REM sleep, that deep sleep that everybody needs, with good REM sleep, every single organ and system in your entire body is operating on all cylinders, or you could say cooking with gas. Everything is working properly. And when everything is working properly with that good sleep, our health is better. Our mood is better. Our energy level is better. Everything is better. So you're here with me tonight to learn a little bit of new items as we do a little trailblazing too. So some of these things that we're going to be talking about tonight are new and different and out, off of the beating path a little bit. So, so bear with me. Stick with me. We're going to go through all 27. And I would say the most important one out of all of the 27 is first, one must rule out sleep apnea or get it treated. So if you are not sleeping well, first thing is talk to your doctor about it. Find out, are you are you a candidate for a sleep study? Are you experiencing sleep apnea symptoms? So if you are, then definitely you have to get that uh, treated and go down that trail. If indeed you do have sleep apnea, there are several different tools that are going to be important to understand. Now, we're not going to get in a lot of detail about CPAP right now. Uh, look at some of the other videos if you want more details on CPAP. And we obviously on this show on Thursday nights, we talk about CPAP every single night. But CPAP is one important tool that one can use to get better sleep. And it is proven to be effective and useful. And actually, it works 100% of the time as long as you can use it. And that's a lot about what this channel is about, is to help you learn new ways to use CPAP and, and really just get the best out of, out of CPAP. Now, there are a couple, if you do have sleep apnea, and we're going to talk about if you don't have sleep apnea, either way, with the other tips. But these first three are just directly talking to people who, who have sleep apnea. There is an alternative to CPAP. It's called Inspire. This is an implantable device that one would have implanted and it actually connects electronically to your tongue and every time you have an apnea your airway closes off electronically then it stimulates the tongue pulls the tongue out of way out of the way so that you'll continue to breathe that is with obstructive sleep apnea there's another implantable device or another tool it's called remedy it's for those who have central sleep apnea this one is similar to inspire it's implantable uh, however, instead of the tongue, it is activating your diaphragm since your central nervous system is not functioning correctly with central sleep apnea. This device senses the apnea and it actually causes the diaphragm to move so that you'll continue to breathe. All right. So now we're already on number five. Now we're talking now about things and tools and tips for people, whether you have sleep apnea or not. All of these will apply regardless of whether you have sleep apnea or not. Uh, number five is increase bright light exposure during the day. So there are many studies that have been shown to, to, to understand that, that sunlight is so important to our circadian rhythm and our sleep life that it's very important. Uh, and in our society today, it's very easy to actually just stay indoors all of the time. If you're not working, you're not having to go out of the house, you might stay indoors all of the time. And it's so important to get that exposure to bright sunlight. And as a matter of fact, regarding the circadian rhythm, 
your body knows what time it is. So, so it's also important to get that bright light early in the morning. So first thing when you wake up, 6, 7 a.m., 8 a.m., whatever time it is, go ahead and get you some bright sunlight in your eyes. Right, not, Don't look at the sun, of course, but get that bright sunlight right away. And then your body clock starts a counter. That way you're going to be as sleepy as you possibly can be when it's time to go to sleep that night. And it will actually make a difference. Now, trailblazers. Here's something really super good. I started doing this several months ago. The very first time I tried a phototherapy patch, I began to sleep much better, deeper dreams, really great dreams. As a matter of fact, I have mine on right now. This is what it looks like. It's just a little simple adhesive phototherapy patch. I don't know if you can see that with that camera, but it just sticks uh, either on your belly or at the top of your spine. Back here is where I like to keep mine. It's very easy. And there is a link in the description if you want to research a little bit more about the, the wearable phototherapy patch. But there are studies on that, clinical studies that show it actually can improve sleep. Number seven, reduce blue light. So blue light exposure, especially in the evening. As a matter of fact, as soon as this video is over, I recommend everyone shut your phone off, shut your computer off and go ahead and detach yourself from blue light. What is blue light? That would be your phone, your computer, even a TV. Blue light actually stimulates your, your mind and it actually sort of wakes you up. So it's important to Detach yourself from the blue light late in the evening so that uh, so that you can actually go ahead and start getting some good sleep. Here's another really good one. I think everybody kind of knows this already. Don't consume caffeine late in the day. Hey, I've been guilty myself. Sometimes I like to have caffeine, but definitely not too, too late in the day. Uh, it obviously will keep you awake and you just won't get any any sleeps uh, whatsoever. So we're only on number eight right now. I'm going to come back to number nine here. I want to take a look at comments. I see we've got uh, Christy is here. Mike is here. Hello, Mike. How you doing, buddy? And uh, Jennifer's here, Jane, and, and a lot of other people here as well. All right. Very good. So here we go. Number nine. This is a really great tip. Reduce irregular or long daytime naps. If you're using CPAP and if you're having problems with CPAP uh, or if you're not, either way, if you're not sleeping well at night, you're going to have a tendency to want to take these long three hour naps during the day. While some studies have shown that napping during the day is good, the same studies will also tell you that too long of a nap is not good. So we're talking like the best nap if you have to take a nap is probably around 30 minutes, but not any more than that, because it's just like if you eat too much before dinner, you remember your mom used to say, you know, no, don't eat anything now. We want you to have an appetite. It's exactly the same with sleep. All right. Number 10, try to sleep and wake at consistent times. And that is uh, especially for uh, shift workers. Um, it's very difficult. I know because you're back and forth some, uh, but if you're not a shift worker, you know, shift workers, you have to just kind of do what you can to make it all work. If you're not a shift worker, though, get consistent with the time you go to bed, whether you feel sleepy or not, uh, and the time that you wake up. And you will find that that circadian rhythm, especially if you incorporate some early wakeful time with some sunlight, uh, it will actually make quite a difference. Now, we're going to go through some supplements that are super proven to, to actually be helpful. Now, this one, a lot of folks have heard of. Uh, melatonin, of course, is an easy way to improve sleep quality and fall asleep faster. Now, I'm not a doctor. I recommend with all of these supplements, talk to your doctor about these to make sure we're not having some interactions with some other medications. Uh, but these are all safe. Um, take one to five milligrams around 30 to 60 minutes before going to bed. Here's another one. Ginkgo biloba. Now, you've probably heard of this one as well. A natural herb, many benefits. Uh, it may aid sleep, relaxation, and stress reduction, but the evidence is limited. Take about 250 milligrams, 30 to 60 minutes before bed. Number 13, glycine. This is a newer one with fewer studies. However, the, the studies about glycine are looking promising that it may be something that's that's helpful. By the way, I don't recommend taking all of these. I recommend taking maybe one of these at a time to see if it will work. And again, check it with your doctor. Valerian root. Have you guys ever heard of this? Valerian root is a, a supplement 
that it can help you fall asleep and improve the quality of your sleep. Uh, here is another one. Now, this one I've tried many times myself, magnesium. And not only is it good and helpful regarding sleep, but also from a digestive standpoint, it's really helpful. So there's about 600 different reactions that, that require magnesium in your body, and it definitely can re, uh, improve relaxation and enhance sleep quality. Number 16, L-theanine. It's an amino acid. It can improve relaxation and sleep. Take about 100 to 200 milligrams before bed. Now, this next one, it does come in capsule form, lavender. Uh, I have not used it in capsule form. However, we have a diffuser. We put a little water into the water vapor diffuser. And then we put, my wife and I, we put some lavender drops into that. And man, I want to tell you, when you do that, the aroma in the room is absolutely beautiful. And you go right to sleep. It's, it's a wonderful thing. So the next one is one that I think many people have not heard of, and it's because it's it's new. It's a new thing that people are really starting to discover more and more. It is called Fulvic, Fulvic, F-U-L-V-I-C. And the Fulvic, is, uh, it improves sleep and daytime energy, which is really great. So this fulvic acid helps with the absorption of minerals and nutrients in your body. And as you know, if you have a deficiency, uh, deficiency of nutrients and or minerals in your body, everything begins to go haywire. So many people over the years, over the decades previously, have used a multivitamin. Multivitamins are great if you can get absorption. But the problem is that so many times you take a vitamin and it really just goes right through your digestive system. Nothing really happens. So Fulvic is very much, um, actually I have some here. I wanted to show you guys. This is called Alpha, uh, Alpha Bios Fulvic. Comes in a little packet like this and I'm just going to mix it with a little bit of water right here in this demonstration. Let me open the packet up here and let you see exactly what this looks like. I joke around um, calling this, uh, I call it drinking dirt, because really, if you think about it, a plant, what is a plant? A plant is something that a seed was planted, and then after the seed was planted, it uses the minerals and the dirt and becomes a plant, right? So even though, it's not dirt. The plant was dirt, right? Does that make sense? So all plants and really pretty much everything you eat comes from dirt. And this Fulvic Alpha Bios right here, I just mix it up a little bit. I joke around saying that it's like drinking dirt, but it doesn't taste bad. It doesn't taste bad at all. But the point is that dirt has all of the minerals and vitamins and nutrients that we need. And as far as absorption goes, no issues whatsoever because it's in that liquid form. So it doesn't taste bad at all, but it, it really just supercharges your sleep and energy level in the daytime. So there is a link to in the description if you want to research that some more. Number 19, don't drink alcohol. Don't drink alcohol as far as it relates to sleep. Alcohol will cause segmented sleep every time. Yes, you're going to fall asleep faster and easier, but you're going to wake up and you're going to wake up numerous, numerous times throughout the night and you're going to get less REM sleep if you're drinking alcohol. So I recommend, whoops, not yet. I recommend don't, don't do that. Okay. Let's see here. Hold on one second. I clicked the wrong button. All right, let me fix that. All right. Don't drink alcohol. Now, number 19, number 20, optimize your bedroom environment, uh, your bedroom environment. We're going to talk about temperature in a minute, but to have less light is always good. If you do have light, maybe a reddish colored light is really good, but make sure that your room is comfortable, quiet, cozy, something that, that you like and enjoy and are comfortable in. Number 21, set your, your bedroom temperature. Now, there is are many discussions about 
what is the proper bedroom temperature? And of all the studies I've seen, anywhere between 62 and 70 is what is said to do in the studies. Most, most of the best studies that I read are 64. 64, 65 degrees is probably the optimal temperature, although everybody is a little bit different. So play around with it and find out what is exactly the best temperature for you. Number 22. Don't eat late in the evening. That may be for obvious reasons. If you eat late, then your body is using up energy and digesting and, you know, there could be other problems related to that. So eating too late is definitely, uh, it's, a, it's a game changer and it can really affect your sleep tremendously. Number 23, relax and clear your mind in the evening. For me, on my journey, my quest, it's prayer. I lie in bed. I pray every single night. There are many different ways you can relax and sort of clear your mind. Uh, as a matter of fact, another good one is to take a bath or a shower just before you go to bed. That can be super helpful, especially if it's warm and if it's comfortable. Um, number 25, get a comfortable bed, mattress, and pillow. I use the MyPillow. I love it. And now there are many different pillows. Now, if you're using CPAP, the pillow is going to be super important since you may have a mask. Well, you would have a mask on your face. You're lying on, on the pillow. You don't want that pillow to push the mask out of the way. So get a, a pillow that you can reshape yourself or even buy a CPAP pillow that has a cutout that allows the mask to, to sit into that void. And it can make a huge difference in how it feels to sleep. Number 26, I hope these are good for you guys. Number 26, exercise regularly, but never right before you go to bed. And that's for obvious reasons too. Um, if you exercise right before you go to bed, your heart's pounding, you're never going to actually fall asleep. And then the last one, I, I just broke the rule here just a minute ago, drinking the full Vic, but it is very good to not drink too much fluid right before you go to bed. And that is obvious. Obviously, uh, you don't want to have to wake up to go to the restroom multiple times throughout the night. So, you guys, that is, is um, the 27 tips that I have for you, things that I have learned throughout my journey. And uh, since I see you guys, uh, we've got some extra people here. Um, and I have someone here asking a question. It looks like they're coming over from Facebook. We're not going to see their name, and that's fine. Uh, the Facebook user is is asking this. All right, totally new to all this. Just got my CPAP machine this past Monday. Have used it the last two nights, but the machine tells me it was only in operation for an hour and a half. All right, so. If the machine is uh, telling you it was only in operation for an hour and a half, what I'm going to guess, now I can't know this for sure, but the machines do have a setting and it's called auto off. And if the auto off setting is turned on, and then if you pull your mask off while you're sleeping, perhaps you did this. You might have pulled your mask off while you were sleeping. The machine recognized that and turned itself off. So that's a good possibility. If it's not that, then it could be just the something wrong with a machine. Um, but I think the, 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 the first thing I said there is probably the most, the most likely. Now here we have another Facebook user saying, I use a weighted blanket. Weighted blankets are excellent. They actually are very relaxing. It, it actually helps you relax to use a weighted blanket. Uh, one word of caution regarding the, the weighted blanket though. If you are using a weighted blanket, make sure you don't have it up here. Since sleep apnea is, is all happening right in this area right here, the weight of that blanket could be a little bit too much and just actually cause more apneas. So keep your weighted blanket level, you know, down here or, or maybe up to even here, but, but definitely not up here with a weighted blanket. That's my recommendation regarding the weighted blanket. I think it's a pretty important one too. All right. Now we have another question here. Facebook user. I have a question. I have a little bit of a runny nose. My Dreamwear nasal cushion and my N30 mask whistles when I put them on. My P10 mask works just fine. No whistling. Is this normal with a runny nose? Well, the whistling of the mask, that is something some of those different models of, of masks are going to, to whistle. It's not going to make a difference whether you have a runny nose or not. However, I, I want to actually address the, the runny nose. Typically, when you're brand new on CPAP, it's, it's really 
so different to your to your system. You know, the job of the nose, the reason that we have a nose is to humidify and warm the air that's going into your lungs because the way the lungs operate, they operate optimally with warm and humid air. So our nose has just that job, like the air comes in, the nose has all this moisture in your nose for the purpose of warming and humidifying that air before it goes into your lungs. With a CPAP machine, you have this air pressure now and the flow is a little bit higher and it can really just overwhelm your nose to the point that your nose is now like on supercharge and trying its best to provide enough fluid to actually humidify all of that air that's going into your lungs. And so it, it over, it overcompensates really. That is something that unless you have a cold or some, you know, some sort of viral bacteriological situation, if we're just talking a mechanical type of situation, that's going to go away. It might take a little bit of time uh, regarding the whistling of the CPAP interface. That is something that I can't really do anything about that. It's just going to it's going to whistle. That particular brand is likely to whistle based on the pressure that you have it set at. Now, there are some masks, mini masks that don't whistle. Um, my favorite is the Swift FX nasal. Um, I like that one a lot, but I mean, there, there are so many out there. All right. Now, well, now we got a uh, Christy. Hi, Christy. Thanks for commenting. I wear a sleep eye mask to darken the room. That is actually super good idea. Super good idea. A dark room is typically for most people, um, a better room to, to actually sleep in. All right. So it looks like we got everybody accounted for here. And um, if you don't mind, I am going to um, actually I'm going to go ahead and give away. We have a membership group over on the YouTube channel and I'm going to actually give away a few memberships. I need to just click over here and get into the YouTube channel to give away a few memberships to people who are watching right now. Uh, just take me just a second to find this. If you would ask me another question um, while you while you're you're waiting on me to do this, um, ask me another question regarding uh, CPAP or just sleep in general, and I'll do my best to to give you a good answer on that. All right, now I'm actually watching watching myself on YouTube. And we are going to give away some memberships into our members only section right now. So stay tuned here. We we'll give away five memberships to our YouTube channel. And I'll tell you all about that. We're giving it right now. So take a look. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see that actually live on YouTube. Let's come back over here. All right, I'm back with you guys now. So um, all you guys who just received a membership, let me tell you what that is all about. We do have a YouTube channel, obviously. So if you're watching on Facebook, I want you to know there also is a YouTube. You can find it by searching Affinity HM and you'll find us on YouTube. So most of the videos there are free and there for your perusal. There are 200 videos. If you want to join as a member, there's two really good reasons to do that. One just support me, just support me, help me out. I could use the support, all of the support that I could get. And then secondly, and it, more importantly, really, is if you're new on CPAP and if you don't feel like you got some really good training about the details of the machine, the humidifier, backup batteries, masks that are good, uh, what is sleep apnea, what is the difference of CPAP, APAP, BiPAP, it's just a lot of training videos that are available, but it's available only to members. So I encourage you to join as a member and uh, you'll have access to all of that information. It's an entire library of information, training videos that are very straightforward and very comprehensive for anyone that is using CPAP. So, all right, you guys, well, let's see, is there anyone else with a question? Da -da. So this live is playing on YouTube and Facebook. And let's see if anybody got a membership. Uh, if you just received a membership, if you would comment and let me know. All right, here's a good question. Mike, Mike actually is a member. Thank you, Mike. I have moved from an elevation of 1,200 feet 
to 7,900 feet. My numbers went from one to five to eight. Super interesting, super interesting. All right, Mike, at that elevation, there is going to be an adjustment that might need to be made to your machine. It's going to depend on what brand of machine that you have. But because the air is so much lighter, the machine actually has to drive a little bit harder in order to achieve that same pressure that you had down at the 1200 foot level. So it's going to be important to um, check with your supplier and your doctor regarding this change. And uh, they'll be able to go into your machine and tweak it. It's not going to be a huge difference. Let me say if your pressure, I don't know what your pressures were, but let's say your pressure was 12. That's a common pressure, 10, 12. Uh, if your pressure was 10, 12, um, it's going to have to be adjusted to something like 12, uh, 11, 13, something along that line. It's not a big difference. However, just like you just said, I mean, your apnea is only tweaked up a little bit. So there's going to have to be a pressure change made there, Mike. I'm glad you asked that question. Thank you. Um, okay. How can I deal with apnea besides CPAP? So I'm glad you asked that one too, because in the very beginning, we talked about there's CPAP, there's Inspire, and there is Remedy. Now, Remedy is very rarely used. It's only for central sleep apnea. It's implantable. Inspire is used a lot more. It is for obstructive sleep apnea. However, everyone doesn't qualify for the Inspire. So CPAP right now is the number one very best solution for sleep apnea. And like I said, it does work 100% of the time as long as it can be used. If we can't use CPAP, if we can't use CPAP, then uh, talk to your doctor. There are uh, dental devices as well. They don't always work. It just depends on what exactly is going on. The dental devices will actually just help your jaw, your bottom jaw stay a little bit more forward, which reduces the amount of uh, apnea for some people. And some people it does work. But um, that's pretty much that's pretty much it um, regarding uh, sleep apnea and the uh, various solutions. Some people who have sleep apnea can overcome it through uh, some weight loss, some exercises, et cetera. But these are all things that on YouTube or Facebook video, I can't really you know get into all of that because every person is a little bit different. But I recommend, first of all, I recommend, you're asking the question, possibly, I'm thinking maybe you're asking the question because you're having a lot of problems with CPAP. And that's not so unusual. A lot of people have problems with CPAP. And that's why, you know, we set up the membership program over in YouTube. So consider joining that. Maybe there's some information in there that would be helpful. But all the way, mainly what I want you to, to know is hang in there with it because so many people do have problems, especially in the beginning, that it's not really surprising for me to hear someone having problems and the problems I know already after 32 years of setting up CPAP already I almost can see what's going to be down the road for you. And that is I had some problems. I overcame them. I solved those problems through information that I learned either here or over on Facebook, the group CPAP for beginners through your doctor, through your DME supplier. Somebody has the answer for you. And it's going to make CPAP easier and more comfortable. And ultimately, what almost everyone says to me is, I used to hate my CPAP. I wanted to throw it out the window. And now I love my CPAP. And I can't, nor would I want to sleep without it. So I pray that's what's going to be in the cards for you. So hang in there is, is the, the final word I, I want to say about that. Okay, one more question. This is the last one for tonight. Any tips for someone new to CPAP who are having trouble with wearing the mask for more than an hour or so without having anxiety or issues? Yeah, or, or with it being hot. Absolutely. Yeah, I've, I've got some answers for you on this. So it's, it's partly because being brand new on CPAP, it is so odd. It feels so weird, doesn't it, to just have that air pressure all the time whether you're breathing in or breathing out, it feels like you can't exhale all the way. And it just feels odd. It feels weird. It feels uncomfortable. So the best thing to do is actually during the day, uh, even when you're not intending to sleep at all, go to your recliner, your sofa at the TV, 
plan on watching a movie or a TV show, okay? Get everything all set up and sit down with your mask. Don't even put the headgear over and on. Just, just have the headgear out here. Hold the mask in your hand. Turn the machine on and hold the mask to your face. While you're watching the movie, just hold the mask to your face. And then as you get deeper and deeper into the movie, at some point, you know, go ahead and put the headgear on and, and pull it tight. And what you're going to find is that as long as your, your mind, you can get your mind on something else other than the CPAP, like the movie, then, then it gets easier and easier and you get more and more acclimated to it. So becoming acclimated while you're awake is going to make it so much easier that night and the nights in the future when you lay down, put it on, you'll just begin to get more and more used to it. Regarding anxiety, I wish that um, anxiety over CPAP, uh, I, I wish we could flip the script on that because really, if you if you really think about it, you should have the anxiety without the CPAP because with the CPAP, you know, one, your airway is going to maintain open. You know that you're going to breathe while you after you fall asleep, you know you're going to breathe and you're going to breathe well and you're going to breathe fine. And you, so you're going to be good. So I hope that's a good answer. But try to get acclimated during the day, watching a movie, maybe reading a book or something along that line. Yes, it is definitely overwhelming whenever you first start on the CPAP. All right, you guys. Well, it is um, after 830. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this off. Thank you all for being here. Go over to our YouTube channel. Please join as a member. Take a look at those uh, videos that we have in the membership section and uh, feel free to ask questions. This video will be available even after this video is over. So I look forward to, to talking to all you guys again next week. We'll see you then. Hope everyone has a wonderful evening. Take care, everybody. Bye bye. Sleep well.